How's it going everyone? In today's video, I'll be showing you how to better manage your site's data and content with a combination of custom post types and advanced custom fields. And before we start, if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button to get notified about my weekly WordPress videos. Thanks in advance, it means a lot. And now that that's out of the way, let's learn something. So the reason why I'm creating this video is because I've been asked a lot about how people can better manage their site's data. I'm going to give you an example of kind of what I typically see when um, people are creating their sites. So we have a post here and this has some flexible content and inside of here they have, you know, WYSIWYG and then they also have something called toaster specs. So those are the two different types of flexible content that they use. And so the toaster specs kind of just has a bunch of information about that toaster. So seems pretty easy, right? You fill out the information about the toaster and now all of a sudden you have a nice content piece here. And now you have, you know, a review for it. So the problem with this is we've got our mega toaster here, right? And we've got the specs about that toaster. Well, let's say, you know, that toaster appears in a lot of different articles, not just the best toasters of 2019 so far. If we were to go into our dashboard, go to all posts, duplicate this post, and, you know, let's see, edit that, you know, most reliable toasters. All right, so we have a brand new post here, but you know, the, the mega toaster is in here too. And let's say one day you wake up and the price of that toaster is now $150. Well, that's really no big deal, right? We can just, you know, save it, go into our other post too, and update our mega toaster to $150. You know, big whoop, right? Well, now, as the site starts to get bigger and bigger, that's going to become a problem. We, you know, are not not going to have just two articles. We're going to have, you know, hundreds of articles, many of which are going to have the mega toaster in it. So as you can tell, as you start to like build your site, your data becomes unmanageable real quick. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to better manage your data through custom post types and advanced custom fields. So the major misconception about custom post types is that they're simply, you know, a kind of sidebar for posts and pages. It's not quite a post. It's not quite a page. It's just another way to get an archive of a specific group of data. So you know, we go to slash toasters and then we get a list of all the toasters, you know, categorized by date published and you can go in there and, and read the reviews and all that kind of stuff. So you get the archive page, you get the single page, but that's about as far as people think sometimes. And what I want to show you is just using it as a place to store your data and then use that data on the templates throughout the site. So I have created here a toasters custom post type. We can go into each one of these toasters and we'll see basically that same information that we saw in the post just barely. It's got the price, the rating, all the specs for it. Now we have a centralized location for information about the toastosterone, a toaster for men. Now what we can do is we can actually make the editing process of these posts a whole lot easier. So instead of going in here and adding a new toaster and having to edit the information itself, what we can do is we can make a drop down that makes it so you can just select what toaster you're talking about and have it pull in the information automatically. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go over to our custom fields and take a look at our field groups. So this is what our um, post content looks like. It's simply a a flexible content field and it has two things in here it has plain content and toaster specs which has all the information that we can fill out let's add another one here and let's call this toaster specs automatic almost did the wordpress automatic 
All right, and then we only need one field in here. Let's call this toaster. And out of all those field types, we are looking for something very specific. We're looking for post object. So what kind of post type are we looking for? We are looking for toaster. And all we care about actually is the post ID here. We don't want to get the entire post object, so it might save us a little bit of time and it's going to clean up what is returned. So that's all we need. Let's go back up and save it. And let's create a new blog post. Now what we have is toaster specs automatic and then we can select our toaster. So we're going to pick, you know, toastosterone and let's add, you know, just a little bit more of content in front of it. You know, an H2 best toaster ever. And let's hit publish. Well, this actually isn't really going to show up very well and no content is really going to be displayed other than the best toast ever because we actually need to hook up this functionality. So let's jump over to our code. All right, so right now we're in the theme. Let's go down to single.php and let's take a look at what we got here. So what I have is a basic setup for an, a flexible content field. We're looking for plain content and we're looking for toaster specs. And the toaster specs are pumping out this, you know, H4 with a table underneath it. And it's getting all of the information about our toaster. And so this is actually kind of something we're going to copy. So what we care about is this else if, and we're just going to copy that and let's paste it right below it. Let's give it some PHP tags. And so we just need to change toaster specs to toaster specs automatic. And now we can start editing this to make it, well, automatic. So now we're not actually going to be using subfields anymore. So let's make sure that we get rid of those. And we're going to be using the post ID that's returned from that um, field that we select. So Let's create a new variable here called toaster ID and it's going to be get subfield toaster. So now we can use this toaster ID down here. And since we're not inside of the flexible content anymore, we can use this second parameter that ACF lets you use that lets you put in the post ID. So since all the IDs are unique, no matter the post type, we can just plop this in here right as is. So let's hit refresh. Let's go back to our other page. Let's hit refresh. And now all of a sudden we have the toaster for um, testosterone. So we have all the information that's inside of it. So if we have this post, which we're going to be called, you know, best toaster ever, hit update. And let's change the other one. So if we go into best toasters of 2019 so far, let's find the one that we were looking for here. Let's delete it. And then let's add a layout here, the automatic one. Let's hit testosterone. Let's hit update. And let's do view post here as well. So we have the information just like it was before. So if we go to those two different posts, I accidentally closed it, so we're gonna go in there now. So best toaster ever, 900 bucks, all that same information. And inside of here, all that same information. So here's where it gets really nice. So if we go back in to our toaster, and we change that price, you know, now it's $1,000. We hit update and we refresh here, it's $1,000. And we refresh here, it's $1,000.
we did not have to go into each individual post and update that number ourselves. I hope you can start to see how much time this would save you in the long run if you're editing thousands of posts at a time or if you have lots of different types of posts that this kind of information would pull up. So if you had some sort of comparison tool, if you're comparing toasters together, that you could still pull on that same information from the custom post type. And as always, I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure that you give the video a like. And if you're new, make sure to subscribe for weekly videos. And again, thanks. I appreciate all the support. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.